You're weird. Let's start there. Even the way you exist is weird. You're a mammal. But you don't give birth like one. Nope. You pop out of an egg. Because why not confuse everyone right from the start? You hatch in a muddy tunnel underground, deep in the dark, sticky and blind, looking like a melted jelly bean with legs. You can't swim. You can't see. You can't even hold your head up. Mom takes one look at you, sighs the sigh of someone who knows this will be a full-time job, and curls around you. Now comes feeding time, and here's where things get even stranger. She has no nipples. None. Zero. Instead, she sweats milk out of her skin. You lick it off her fur like a baby barista doing foam art. Warm, milky sweat. Mmm, nature's latte. And get this, it's pinkish white. Because of course it is. Regular milk was too basic for you. Thick, rich, and full of stuff to help you grow. You just know it tastes like survival, with a hint of weird. For the next few months you stay underground, growing fast. Like nature forgot to stop editing. Your body shifts and stretches. Proportions change. And you go from helpless blob to something that almost makes sense. Your bill starts out short and wide, almost as broad as it is long. But as you fatten up, it stretches and flattens, finally starting to look like the strange duckish gadget you'll use later to find food. Progress, kind of. Then one day, Mom decides you're ready. She opens the tunnel, and sunlight spills in for the very first time. You blink. Air. Light. Freedom. You crawl out, blinking and awkward, your new fur thick and waterproof, but still untested. Your webbed feet aren't much help on land, either. You shuffle. You wobble. You pause. Grace clearly didn't make it onto your survival checklist. And then, it's time. You slide into the river, the water cool and heavy against your fur. You paddle with your front feet, steer with your back ones and tail, and hope your bill knows where you're going. You can't see a thing, but you can feel electricity. Fish twitch? You sense it. Worm wiggle? You sense it. Basically, you're a swimming metal detector with fur. The moment you dive, your eyes, ears, and nostrils snap shut. Silence. Darkness. You glide along the bottom, your bill brushing through the sand, sensing every twitch and ripple. Tiny signals flicker through the water. An insect larva here, a shrimp there. A faint pulse, then movement. Target locked. Gotcha. A tiny crayfish twitches, and your bill catches the signal. You scoop it up, mash it with your front paws, sort the bits, and stuff the good parts into your cheek pouches. Gourmet dining, platypus style. You're mostly a night owl. Well, a night platypus. The river is your buffet, and you clock in right before sunset like it's your shift at nature's weirdest diner. Some nights you hunt for ten, maybe twelve hours straight, sometimes even twenty-four. No breaks, just snacks as breaks. You're built for the job, though. Your fur traps air so well you basically float, which sounds nice until you realize it makes swimming harder. You flap your front feet like a tiny exhausted rower while your back ones just sort of steer. Energy efficient? Not really but you've got a lower body temperature than most mammals, so at least you save a bit on heating bills. Above water, though, disaster. You waddle like a wet sock full of spaghetti. Your feet stick out sideways, your walk squeaks, and you leave mud everywhere. Graceful you are not. Every day feels the same. Dig, swim, eat, repeat. You spend your nights underwater, scooping up worms, bugs, and crustaceans, then float to the surface to chew with your cheeks stuffed full like a soggy chipmunk. Romantic, huh? 
Your home is a maze of muddy tunnels along quiet rivers and creeks. You live alone. No family dinners, no friend hangouts. Just you and the mud. You're a walking paradox. Part bird, part mammal, part confusion. People once thought you were fake. Literally fake. When explorers first sent your body to Europe, scientists tried to peel off your bill. Sure, someone had stitched a duck to a beaver. Joke's on them. You even store fat in your tail instead of your belly. Because of course you do. Surprise! You were real all along. Your days blur together. The current hums, the mud squishes, and you just keep paddling. You've got no roar, no herd, no grand destiny. You just exist. Quiet, weird, and slightly electric. Eventually, mating season rolls around. The river turns into a battlefield of splashing fur and bad decisions. Every male suddenly thinks he's irresistible. You're not, but you do have weapons. Each back leg hides a sharp spur that can inject venom. You use it when fighting other males for territory or a chance to impress a female. The battles are fierce but rarely deadly. Just a lot of thrashing, kicking, and a few very bad days for someone's leg. When the fighting's done, it's time for the romance part, if you can call it that. Courtship can last from a minute to half an hour, and sometimes it repeats for days. The male, usually bigger, grabs the end of the female's tail, and together you spin in tight circles, dive, tumble, and bump into each other like two confused otters in a washing machine. It's messy, awkward, and strangely effective. If she's impressed, she'll let you follow her to her burrow. If not, you get tail slapped and sent home. Love hurts, but not as much as your venomous spur. As for you, you just keep doing platypus things. You might live 20 years if you're lucky, dodging dingoes, owls, and humans. Once, they hunted you for your fur. Soft enough for gloves, rare enough for guilt. Now they just watch, curious and confused, still not sure what you are. Beaver? Duck? Lizard? Alien experiment? The answer is yes. At night, you drift through the river, fur slick, eyes closed, bill pulsing with electricity. The moonlight ripples above, silver on your back. You're calm, quiet, alone, and maybe a little proud, because somehow, against all logic, you exist. A mammal that lays eggs. A hunter that hunts blind. A poison-armed furball with duck feet and sonar powers. Sure, it sucks to be a platypus sometimes, but it's also kind of electrifying. 